Let's talk about margin loans and how they work. Because I personally think margin loans are a great financial tool that kind of get a bad rap because they're technically debt. So I'm going to show you how to take out a margin loan in a brokerage account, just how easy that is to do. We'll get into the technicalities of margin loans and the numbers you need to know about behind them. And then I'll also share with you when I personally use margin loans. So here we go. We'll start with my brokerage account here, which we're in. We can see that I've got settled cash of negative 4,776 dollars and change that's a margin loan right there if I want to take out a margin loan all I have to do at this point is just click on withdraw and then it'll open up the window to where I set up how much money I with, want to withdraw and in a few days after submitting that it's usually like two business days the money will be in my checking account wherever I got it transferred to and then my settled cash will ultimately be lower now I don't have to make any payments on that uh, it simply adds the interest that I owe to my settled cash balance right here. So that's the cool thing about margin loans. There are effectively no payments behind them. Now, what is the interest rate on margin loans? That's very, very important. Generally, if you're at the right brokers, you get very low interest rates because it is collateralized by your stock market account. The brokers literally have no risk. I don't want to say literally have no, or I did say they literally have no risk. Uh, that is metaphorical. They do have some risk, but by and large, like in 99.99999% of cases, they have no risk because it's collateralized by your stocks or whatever else you're holding in your portfolio. So if you hit a certain rate, we'll talk about that rate in a second, they're just gonna sell your holdings to ultimately cover your margin loan. So we're gonna talk about interest rates here. Interactive brokers is kind of the standard for low interest rate margin lending. You can see on this page, their margin lending rates here for IB uh, Interactive Brokers Pro on a margin loan of less than $100,000. So if we just come back to her, if we went back to mine, it was at 4,000, I'm paying this rate right here because I have Interactive Brokers Pro. Uh, I don't know what you have to pay for that. It, it's a small fee, it's not much. It's like $12 a month or something that you pay for that. Uh, and then there's also different pricing stru structure on your trades and all that. But if you use margin loans, it is generally worth it to get Interactive Brokers Pro. If you don't have it, you pay this rate over here, which is basically 2.5%. And it's based on your total loan value. So if you're borrowing more than $200 million, your rate is effectively 0.75%. Um, granted, I don't think anybody watching this video is gonna be borrowing more than $200 million. So yeah, we're probably gonna be dabbling around up here in these rates, but still 1.58%, 2.8%. These are very, 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 very low interest rates. All right, so that is, it's essentially low cost money. Uh, let's go into talking about the technicalities and how much you can borrow on margin here. Um, I guess, you know what, before I do that, I should point out there are some other brokers out there. Some of the ones that come to mind are, uh, who's a good one? M1 Finance actually has low cost, very low margin rates. And I think Robinhood does as well, but with Robinhood, I do not know if you can withdraw to cash on Robinhood. You probably can because it's pretty universal. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty universal policy, so it would just be the same thing like I do. Just click the withdraw button, boom, cash comes to your bank account, therefore you created a margin loan. Okay, so let's move on from that and talk about maintenance margin and stuff like that. Uh, there are different maintenance margin requirements, and that means how much collateral or how much equity you have to have in your account. Personally, the one I pay attention to is the overnight rate, which is 50% and that is the lowest. So that means that if you have $1 million in your account, let's just put it in here. Let's put $1 million. And I guess we should preface this by saying, you know, value. $1 million in your account, right? How much can you borrow and hold overnight? The rules are different for intraday trading. You can lever up more, but you cannot hold overnight. I am personally just concerned with overnight holding. I'm not a day trader. So we're not gonna get into that in this video, right? Well, how much can I borrow overnight? Well, the maximum that you can have, or um, yeah, the maximum leverage you can have is effectively two to one. You have to have a 50% uh, 50% overnight margin requirement. Okay, so 50% you have to be collateralized by. So that means that I can take out $500,000 overnight. 
So let's put in here overnight. Okay, so now that's accurate. But here's the thing. Markets are volatile. Markets go up and down. All right, so while it's unlikely that you would, you know, have a 50% loss overnight, like the stock market would just uh, go down 50% in one day, or I guess in this case of an overnight, go down 50, you know, close at one point and then open 50% lower, that's unlikely. Uh, you do have to plan for some volatility. So for example, like let's just say, the market went down 10%, okay? So in that case, you know, we're just gonna say down 10%. Down 10%, now your portfolio balance is at $900,000 here, right? But you've still got this overnight of 500,000. That is not a 50% margin, you know, or not a you're not making your 50% maintenance margin you are going to be at whatever 500 divided by that 900 is, right? So you're over it at 55%. So now in this case, your broker is going to make a margin call. And how the margin call is handled varies wildly at different brokers and seemingly wildly different between accounts. I have not looked into the uniformity of it, but I have seen people report that in some cases, the broker just liquidates their entire account, right? Like everything just liquidates the entire account. Some of them only liquidate a portion of the account to meet the margin. So uh, the point is, the point I'm trying to make here is that you don't want to come close to this margin call. In this case, you know, if you got to, you know, got to this, if you had a million dollars in account value, it goes down to 10% to 900,000, but you've got a 500,000 margin loan on it, then you're at risk of them either liquidating your whole account or liquidating enough to where you get back to the 50% maintenance margin. So that is the risk. So the big thing here is that if you are borrowing on margin, you don't want to you don't want to be borrowing a lot, right? You want to have a lot of padding in your account. Uh, how do I personally factor it in, you know, for myself, and mind you, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice for you. Do your own due diligence uh, before you make any investment decisions or any decisions on margin loans. And please consider that any investing and margin loans in, in particular come with risk. Uh, but what I do personally and how I handle it is I you know, look at my account and I say, all right, I've got a million dollars in here. All right, so we got a million dollars in my account. The stock market's largest drawdown on a monthly basis in recent history would have been the 0809 crash. So I say it could go down 50%. Um, 50%. So that leaves, you know, my, my portfolio value could go down $500,000. So at that level, the maximum that I could margin and have out overnight is 250,000 or 25%. That's personally where I draw the line on it. So I would never personally take out more than 25% of my account's balance. And, you know, that gives me some room to work with there. And that, well, that, you know, effectively handles, or that doesn't effectively handles that personally for me caps what I would take out in a margin loan, but that effectively handles what I could use it for. All right, so let's talk about why you might want to take out a margin loan or why you want to might want to withdraw money on margin. And there's primarily two reasons at a very simple level. And then we'll talk about some more, you know, specific reasons and why I do it. Number one, you want to have exposure to the market. The more exposure you have to the market in the long term, ultimately, the more returns you can have, right? So it's in your best interest to have your money exposed to the market. And I forget the exact statistics, but it's somewhere around the, you know, somewhere around the range of 70% of months in the S&P 500 are positive. So in that case, it pays to have my money exposed or, um, you know, the chances of my money going up in the next month are positive if I keep it in the market. Whereas if I liquidate it to cash, I don't get that exposure to the market. And the other thing, and this you know comes up very, uh, you know comes up very strong or is of very high importance to high net worth investors, is when you liquidate your holdings, you have to pay capital gains taxes on it, assuming you've got gains, right? If you're losing money, I guess it kind of doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter as much. You're just missing out on the potential exposure of, um, you know, of market beta going up. But in, you know, in cases where you've got gains, you have to pay taxes on it. If they're short-term gains, that rate can be in the high 30s. If they're 
long-term gains, that's going to be somewhere between, depending on your income tax bracket, somewhere between 15 and 23%. So that's still high. It is lower cost. It is cheaper to borrow money at these interest rates, particularly the low interest rates we have these days. It's cheaper to borrow money than it is to pay your taxes on it. So that's how billionaires and stuff live that, you know, you see guys like Elon Musk. I don't know if this is the case, but he could be with him or Gates or the Apple CEO or any of them, any of the billionaires. You see them getting a $1 salary. How do they live on a $1 salary? Well, the thing is, is they're getting paid in equity in some way and they're borrowing money against that equity. And that's how they're getting their money. And they're just, you know, paying a margin interest rate on it. They're probably paying this, probably paying the 0.75%. So that's where they actually get their cash from to live when all of their money is in equities. Um, you know, unless you're a high net worth, very high net worth individual and you've gotten guidance from a financial advisor, it's you know probably a far-fetched thing for most people to even consider. So that's why you might want to use margin um, on a fundamental basis. A, you get exposure to the market, higher returns. B, you're avoiding taxes. Now, Let's talk about some practical life reasons why you might want to use margin. And I'll tell you uh, two of them in my own life, and maybe I'll come up with some other examples. Number one, I use it to fund a business. Okay, so I own a business that incurs an accounts receivable. And in this specific business, our accounts receivable turnover is about 75 days. So that means from the time we incur a cost of good, let's just say my cost of good, it costs me $50 to produce it. And I sell it the day I produce it, but I occur in accounts receivable. So somebody's gonna, somebody buys it from me for $100. That day it's produced, it gets sold for $100, but they don't actually pay me that day. I got an invoice, uh, and I got an invoice after a certain date, and then wait to get paid. And it takes on average 75 days for me to get paid. That's my accounts receivable turnover. So I've incurred my $50 cost of production. I have $100 that is owed to me as an account receivable but I don't actually get that cash in my hand to make more widgets and ultimately have a profit that I can spend and live on for 75 days. So in my case, what I do is I can fund the business using a margin loan. I know I'm getting that money back and I'm essentially accounts receivable financing to myself at these margin rates here, which, uh, you know, if we say that I'm in, you know, when I'm aggressively, when the business is growing aggressively here, depending on the time of the year, let's just say my average rate is this 1.08%, divide that by 12, that's going to be about my monthly rate. That's what it's going to cost me to finance my accounts receivables through myself using a large margin loan. And that's a lot cheaper than it is to do accounts receivable factoring, or in my case, selling holdings and realizing capital gains and paying tax and missing out on money in the market. So I, I use the margin loans to uh, fund my business and fund my account receivable. You know, so in my case, fund account receivable. Now the next one here is a little bit crazy and I'm not too good with this whiteboard tool as you can see. There we go. The next one here is a little bit crazy. Some people might call me a little crazy on this one, but considering my personal scenario and my risk tolerance and you know having done my own due diligence, I consider this acceptable for me. I like to use it as my safety net. Uh, now there's gonna be, I know there'll be some people that'll say, well, safety net, right? You don't have that money in cash, et cetera, right? What if the market closes? That is a big risk. If the stock market closes uh, for an extended period of time, it hasn't in many decades. And I don't think it would now since everything is so electronic. That's one of the things I'm considering here. Then I would not be able to, you know, come onto my, mar or my brokerage account and withdraw money on margin. So I use, but at this point, considering everything i consider it i consider accept consider it acceptable for myself to use it as a safety net uh and some other points i'll point out about myself here is number one i'm a relatively high earner number two i have a relatively low lifestyle low cost lifestyle i don't spend a ton of money relative to my income and number three i have basically no debt i don't have a mortgage payment my house has been paid off. I don't have a car payment. You know, my car is paid paid off, right? So considering those things, and oh, I also don't have any kids. That's probably uh, that's probably a very very big factor. If I had kids, I would not be this risky with it. And I, I don't. To me, I don't feel risky, but I would not take this risk with it because kids can do random shit. At least I think they can. <laughs> I, 
I don't know. I, I don't have kids, but I feel like my friend's kids are always just doing random, problematic, problem-causing, chaos-creating, random shit, right? But for that reason, you know, I don't have kids. I, I'm comfortable leaving my safety net fundamentally invested and relying on a margin loan if I ever needed the safety net. Now, in some other cases, when else could you or might you consider using a margin loan? Well, maybe you want to make a cash offer on a house. You know, with the way the market, the real estate market went in 2021, the only way to buy a house was damn near with fucking cash in any kind of hot real estate market. So in that case, it may have been acceptable. Make a cash offer on the house. You get accepted. Pull the money out on, you know, cash margin loan and then refinance it right after you close. That way the buyer is getting their cash or they're, get, they're taking cash offer. I Personally, I don't understand why cash is such a big deal in the real estate world. Like cash offers really don't close much faster, you know, in this day with then conventional mortgages, the buyer still gets cash. Anyways, whatever, I'm not going to go on a rant about that. But um, you can make a cash offer withdrawn on margin, pay a little bit in interest, refinance it, you know, and then replenish your margin account. You could do that. Uh, home improvements, you're going to get a lower interest rate. You're going to get a lower interest rate from margin and then paying the home improvement in cash. That would be another pretty, uh, pretty responsible way of using margin, I think. Uh, what else is out there? I really don't, you know, other than the first two, I really don't think about margin in ways that it could be used. Um, business opportunities. You know, so if you get the option to buy a business, maybe you work for a small business and the owner is looking to retire and you as a long-term employee get the option to buy the business at a discounted rate or if you don't want to say discount rate, but a low side of fair market value, you know, then maybe it might be wise to take the money, you know, just in the form of a margin loan, acquire the business, something like this. Typically my thought on loans and borrowing and paying interest and debt, debt, you know, that big bad word of debt. My thought on it is that debt really is not bad. And I made a video on this, but anyways, that's a whole other topic. But anyways, debt is not bad if you're using it to buy an asset, particularly an asset that generates cash flow and or appreciates in value. Debt is not necessarily a bad thing. So yeah, that's my overview on how margin loan works. Showed you how easy it is there to take out a margin loan. Uh, we touched on maintenance requirements and the numbers you kind of need to consider as a rule of thumb here. You know, I'm just going to put that out on this. I said my own requirement. So I, I want to stress this is only 25%. And, you know, to be honest, I've never actually came close to this 25%. I, I've probably withdrawn about, oh gosh, I, I don't know, I've probably, probably taken out about 10% max uh, relative to my, you know, own brokerage holding. So I, I've never came close to that, but 25% is where I would start drawing the line. And if I started getting close, I would start making some other, uh, some other considerations, you know, and planning my finances accordingly. And then anyways, we covered why margin loans, you know, why you might want to use them. Um, well, I just tapped the microphone there. I hope that didn't obliviate your ears, but exposure to the market and interest rates. And then of course, why I covered it. So what do you think about margin loans? Have you used them? How do you use them in your personal life? Or how do you see yourself potentially using them in your personal life now that you know how they might work? Let me know in the comments below.